It's 6 a.m. I'm sitting in my basement. I haven't had coffee. Why am I doing this? Well, Dad, this video is for you. Um, for anybody else that's watching, if you happen to find this video entertaining, helpful, whatever, like, sh uh, subscribe, share, do your thing, I'm trying to grow this channel so that maybe eventually it can pay for some ammunition. I don't know. Anyway, this is all about holding the gun. How do we hold the gun? Well, um, the first thing you want to consider, and granted, maybe you've already bought the gun. In fact, Dad, I know you already bought your gun, so this may be a little too late. But in the future, consider learning from my mistakes. I've bought a lot of guns, and especially handguns. I mean, rifles, it can matter. Um, but handguns, buy one that actually fits your hand. Uh, so I've had... Glocks, I have Glocks, I have Canics, I've had CZs, uh, what other brands, Rugers, all of these different types of guns, and they all have different ergonomics, how you hold it, what it looks like, and I've learned a, th a thing or two, and honestly, find something that really fits your hand, and you can see with this Smith & Washington Shield, it's very oval shaped, so it just, some of them are kind of blocky, so... Oh, I'll show you an example of a blocky one. So look at this thing. It is pretty much just a rectangle. Yeah, there's a little bit of, uh, of roundness here, but up here it's very flat. So if if your knuckles happen to be spaced either longer, so the distance from this knuckle to this knuckle, than the width of this very blocky uh, grip, then you're gonna you're gonna kind of it's not gonna fit right it's not gonna feel right and if they're like mine they're shorter again you're gonna try to kind of bend your finger and you're not gonna be able to bend it all the way over to the thing and so that's gonna lead to to either sliding your fingers over this way or under sliding them and of course if your fingers are over like this, you're gonna pull more to one side. I would assume that it's actually gonna to be towards the right. And if they're like mine, and they're not far enough over, then when you pull that trigger, it's gonna pull this way. So just something to keep in mind. Obviously, if you have your gun at this point, you can't really do anything about that. But anyway, so we've moved beyond the, the point of, you've already selected a gun that, assuming, fits your hand. And how you're going to know that this really is the case is when you hold your gun, so maybe you can see it this way, with the Smith & Wesson shield, I can actually hold it, and it's good so you can see more or less. When I hold it, it's pretty much in line with the bones of my arm, and that's good because now the recoil force is going to go down my arm, and it's not going to be out to the side like this. You can imagine what's going to happen if the recoil goes this way. It's going to pull the gun this way or be all the way like this. Now, granted, I've never really had this problem or seen this problem, but maybe some people do. Um, so you want that good centered grip right, right down. And somebody, actually, let me see if I can flip it this way. <laughs> My studio isn't the best. So let's, let's do this little guy right here. So... You've got that good grip, it's centered, and now you've got your grip kind of like this. And so what you're gonna do from this point is you're gonna bring this hand in, your support hand, and you are going to slide it about a 45 degree down and under that trigger well, right? Right there. And this space right here is gonna be filled up by your off hand's palm right there. And you're going to slide it and you've got this knuckle on the thumb right here and you've got this little kind of i guess it's the the back of the knuckle or i, I don't know what you would call it it's an articulation and you at the very bottom of the thumb and i stick that right in front of this knuckle right here right where that little pocket is and get good and tight there and you can see how this thumb is pretty flat so it's not up, up and angled this way, it's pretty flat. And what that allows me to do is actually point shoot. It's pretty easy to know where your thumb is. You forget what it's called, but your brain 
kind of knows spatial orientation wise, knows where your body parts are. So it kind of knows where you're pointing. And the cool thing about that is you've got a pretty good idea, at least at short range, where this bullet's gonna hit. And I'm, I'm not looking down the sights, but I've got a pretty good idea of where this thing's gonna go because my thumb is pointing literally right at the target, right at whatever my gun is pointing at, my thumb is pointing at. So that's a pretty cool facet of that. Now, going back to this grip. So you've got that thumb right there and you can do a little bit of pushing. You can push with the thumb and this counteracts the tendency for a lot of people to shoot left. Um, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna do about 60 to 70% of the grip pressure with your off hand. The other hand, your, your main hand, is actually between, well, obviously 30 and 40% of the pressure. And the reason you don't want to do the majority of the pressure with your, your trigger hand, the finesse hand, is because of sympathetic finger movement. So this is a, a cleared handgun. Now, you're going to see that when I pull the, th the trigger here, oh, it's not safe. <laughs> good, it's good to be safe, it's good to be safe. Did you catch that? There's a tiny bit of movement to this side. When you move your fingers, and maybe you can see it a little bit more clearly here. See that? See what happens? Yeah. As you pull your finger, your other fingers kind of move with it a little bit. And you can see it really bad with generally like pinky and ring finger or ring finger and pinky. So if you move the ring finger, the pinky will move. Some people might be able to do this and not move the other one. I can't. And a lot of people can't. So you end up with that sympathetic finger movement that happens. And you, if you're holding super tight, it's gonna happen even worse. So that's why you, you don't hold as hard with this. Now, let me, uh, this is a little scattered. Again, I said I didn't have my coffee. So let's, let's go back, let's look at this. So we get that good grip with this, this hand. We get it nice and centered, down, down up with those bones, good grip. And with the knuckles, let's see if we can get it this way. Try to get pressure with this knuckle right here, underneath the trigger well. And with this knuckle right here, or articulation, push up, push up on that. We're going back to that support hand. We're coming in at that good 45 degree angle and we're getting that finger down. Okay, now we've got good pressure. We've got good pressure, and now that follow through where you're holding more lightly with your main hand, stronger with your support hand, you're pointing directly at the target with your thumb, and you bring it up to your eyes. You don't bring your eyes down to your sights, you bring it up to your eyes, up to your eyes. And from here, you can point at whatever you want to. Now, a really important thing as well is there's this tendency to slap the trigger. So we're slapping the trigger. We're in here and we're just like, okay, go time. All the way through. Uh, go time. All the way through. Go time. And then we're, you know, there's a reset. You've shot the bullet and you come all the way back here and then, ah, yeah, fun. Boom. All the way. Now, that was very exaggerated, but all the way. Okay, so I showed you what not to do. Don't do that. What you wanna do is you wanna be on the wall. Right where it resets, you wanna come back to that wall. So you always wanna come back to this wall before you squeeze through. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is you're just going to, you can see, if you start slapping the trigger, you're gonna have a lot less control. A lot less control. But if we're on the wall, very, very gentle. So be on the wall. Oh, we're gonna go all the way through the sequence. So we've got that good grip. We got the, the knuckle up here pushing a little bit. 
We've got the knuckle down here pushing. We've got it nice and centered. We're coming in like this. Okay, we've got that good uh, support hand kind of back there in that, in that crevice. Thumb pointed straight. And we've got our finger in the trigger well, which you can't really see. And we're going to press onto that wall. Okay, so we're onto that wall. And we bring it up to our sights. We're on the wall. We're on the wall. 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 And it's good to actually practice that. It's good to practice that dry fire, regular shooting as well, but to always be on that wall, know where it is. And some some uh, handguns are going to have a more defined wall than others. Glocks have a really strong wall. So this little guy right here, this is very, very pronounced wall. And then it's completely rigid and boom, it goes. So just in general, those are a few things to consider. One, get yourself a gun that fits. Two, get that main hand holding it well. Three, bring that support hand in well. And four, don't slap that trigger. Make sure you're on the wall. You know where that is. You feel comfortable with it. And that is going to greatly increase your accuracy. So short video, long video, it depends <laughs> how you view it. We're so used to those, what, one minute shorts. Um, so 11 minutes is a little longer than that. But anyway, I hope you enjoy this video, uh, Dad, and anybody else who happens to watch it and that it's useful for you. If you have any feedback, things you've learned, uh, things you don't like, go ahead and share it in the comments. That's fine. I'm always willing to learn and to try to change things. So anyway, God bless all of you. Thank you so much for watching and take care until next time.